Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to go over how you can import results into your survey, how you can export results from your survey, and things to keep in mind when you're importing results into your survey. So to start, let's head into the survey to see where we go to find where to import and export. Now when I'm in the survey, I'm going to head into the data analysis tab. In the top right corner, right about here, you should see export and import. And if you click on that to export data and get it out of your survey, just going to click export data, choose the file type you want, download. And depending on how much data you have, it'll take a little bit of time or a lot of time. In my case, I have virtually no data, only 16 responses, so it didn't take too much time at all. Now let's open this guy up and let's see what it looks like. So I exported to the CSV file. So I have things like start date, end date, status, basically everything I see in the data analysis tab pops up in here. And it looks good, it looks great. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this back into the survey so you have an idea of what that looks like. So we're gonna exit out of this, close, then we're gonna import this data back in. Choose that same CSV or TSV file, upload this. And then something to keep in mind when you're importing something into the survey is that you'll see this section that says ignore column. So this ignore column pops up when the data either A doesn't recognize what's being read or B is going to overwrite that information with new information. So for example, start date and end date don't have ignore column because the data can read that and understand what it's referencing there. This status response type, when you're importing responses, it's going to rewrite whatever the original status was with import. So it's going to ignore this column and just overwrite it. And then same thing with these guys, this recorded date will change the date of import. So we just overwrite all these guys, so ignoring this column along with response IDs. And then things like scores don't get saved on imports, so these columns are ignored. Now, now that we've done that, we can just click import responses, and then we should get a message for a successful import if the import is successful. Perfect, and it was. Now let's go over a common mistake people make when trying to import that usually messes them up big time when they're trying to import their responses. Let's go here. Now what I often see is that people usually ignore these two rows. Actually, let me put them back. These two rows thinking they're unimportant, but these two rows are the most important rows you have because this is how the computer actually understands what's going on and interprets the data here. Without this, the Qualtrics platform doesn't really know what it's reading. And without row three, it can't translate all this information into useful information that's stored in the platform. Same thing with row two being a buffer between row one and row three, where it repeats what should be going into the platform. But what a lot of people do is they delete these two rows because they believe it's unimportant, just have the start date, end date, status, etc just that first row and then try to import this as a file into the platform and as you'll see that doesn't really work so let me move myself over here and let's import this so export to csv let's call it test one and then now if i close out of this I have two test ones, one is CSV, one is numbers file. And then I'm gonna import the test one that's a CSV without the rows. And then you'll see that Qualtrics doesn't know what to read here. Without that third row, it doesn't even know what to read into Qualtrics. It can't even recognize any of the text and any of the data. And this is something a lot of people run into where they select the file, they think it looks good, and they try to import it, and then nothing. Nothing gets imported. That is especially why you need to make sure 
that you have all the three relevant headers, all the three relevant top rows so that your file can import correctly as we saw before and all your data gets put in. I hope that clarifies things and gave a little bit more insight into some troubles people do have when importing files. If you guys do have any additional questions or concerns or want to go over anything, please feel free to reach out in the comment section below. Always happy to clarify anything or go over anything further or cover any additional topics you guys want to see. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you guys again soon in the next video.